What's going on everybody, this is Delmer and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video I'm going to continue with Netcode for Game Objects. Specifically we're going to be looking at Server RPC and also Client RPC. With Client RPC we're going to be using the Client RPC params that are going to allow us from the server to basically notify a specific clients. This is going to be helpful because we're going to be using a new animation which is going to be a punch animation. We're going to be doing a raycast from our fist and basically when we hit another player, we're going to notify that player that is getting hit. So let's jump into my computer and I start working on it. All right guys, so what we're going to be doing today is I'm going to walk you through a couple of things that I'm going to be covering, such as how to communicate to other players that I'm actually punching another player and then decreasing the health of that player. So when we do that, we need to think about, okay, who needs to be notified, right? So if we're creating a multiplayer game, we need to, you know, decrease the health by going to the server because the server is the one that has access to the network variables. And then based on who I'm punching, I need to notify that client that it's getting, that, that you know, that it's getting punched so that we want to, if we wanted to run a different animation, maybe you're getting hit and basically you can do that. So I'm going to show you how we can use the server RPC, client RPC, and basically when we use a client RPC, how we can actually choose which client we want to notify that it's getting punched. So I have two different animators right now. This is the one that you guys are familiar with, which has the idle, run, walk, reverse walk. The new one that I'm gonna be you know, talking about today has a new state and the state is punching and I'm using a blend tree to basically alternate between, this is basically a mirror of this animation that I have right here. So this is a punch and then the other one is just mirror based on the same thing and then I'm using a blend tree so that we can have more dynamic animations. So let me go ahead and pause that. So that's how it's going to work and then if I go into parameters we're now going to have a punch trigger and also a punch blend which the blend is going to you know play a big role when we want to make more dynamic animations. So the first thing that we need to do is I'm going to be making a couple of changes. So just know that I have a new scene which is demo server RPC and client RPC and this one is going to be specifically for this video. I'm also going to be creating a new controller. It's going to be specific for this video because I know you guys mentioned that you didn't like me changing a specific script and, and that makes sense because if we want to go back to that, then you know things don't change in the middle of you watching a video. So, so what I'm gonna do is first I'm going to go into my prefabs and I'm gonna clone the armature, player armature network. And then this one, I'm just gonna call it something else so that we can we can use it for this video. And then this one's gonna be player with ray cast, and then armature network. I think that's completely fine. And then if I go back, I think this is going to let me do. Okay, I see. Let me go back here. And then if I go back, I think that should be named correctly. Okay, looks like it's name is named correctly. And then if I go into a scripts, and there is a player control. And you guys are really familiar with the, this player control because I've been covering this in, in multiple videos. This is gonna be the first one that we implemented. I'm going to be cloning this as well. We're just going to create a brand new one. It's gonna go ahead and do control D to clone it. And again, I'm gonna just give it a, new, a unique name so that you guys can see the changes. And I'm gonna call it player with Raycast control. And the reason why I'm gonna call it with, uh, I'm gonna call it Raycast is because when we punch a player, we're going to have basically a ray going from our hand. If we're using our left hand or right hand, there's gonna be a ray that is going to go, you know, so far. And if that ray hits uh, a client, then I know that, you know, I need to start the action of notifying the server and also the server notifying back to the client. So if we go back in here, and I need to make this player, player with raycast control. And then if we go back, I think everything should be compiling now. And then I'm gonna assign that script also to our new prefab so that, you know, that's gonna be, it's gonna be the one that we're going to be using. So if we go here, you're gonna see that we have all these variables. We can probably just copy those values. I think we're gonna be able to do that. And then remove the component. And then this one is going to be player, let's see, player control with Raycast. Player with Raycast control, there we go. And I think all these values should be okay. And let me see if I can do, Okay, you know, I cannot paste the values because it was a different script. The other thing that I want to do as well that I noticed that was an issue specifically with this is a component that we're gonna need, which is going to be that network transform. And I think some of you asked me, Dilmer, why did you add it 
uh, network, let me do that again, network transform. Because you guys asked me, why did I add it? And then also I had network variables. Well, the reason why I added it is because if you look at these right here, the star method, this is going to designate where the client is going to be, you know, going to, and this is going to be a random number. So by using the network transform, it's basically gonna synchronize that position initially. If I don't use it, I notice that it puts the player, it's gonna be a random, so it won't, the other players won't know where this client is going to be located. So it wouldn't really look realistic. All right, so now we can go back into Unity and I think that should be, everything should be compiling. And we should also see the network transform. If it doesn't get added, then we'll add it manually. I think it didn't get added because I added this later. We can do remove component and then I can also go back and go ahead and add it. A couple of things, I don't need the X, Y, and Z here. In fact, we probably don't need the rotation. I'm just gonna leave it in there because that's how I, I tested it before. But I think that should be everything in there. And then if we go back to Network Manager, we're gonna now associate that new prefab to the Network Manager. So let's go ahead and double click it. And I think everything in here should be, should be good. So now what we need to do is we need to focus quite a bit on the, on the script. And we also need to, so let's go back into Player with Raycast. We also need to associate the right animation, right? Right now, I have the simple animator, but we need the advanced animator, which is the one that is going to have our new two parameters, which is punch and also punch blend. And I think now that should be everything that we need. So, okay, so we have the network manager with the new prefab. We also have that prefab with the new scripts. So if we double click on it, we have a network transform and also the player Raycast control, which we're going to be extending. So a couple of things that we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to change the player state. So if we go back into player state, I had an aim and a shoot, and I was gonna do basically like a gun type of game. And then I decided just to do a punch, just to keep it, keep it very simple. So that's what basically we're gonna be calling. You wanna make sure that you match this player punch to this parameter, because we're gonna be using some variables that are gonna have the same name. And then we're gonna actually use the name of the state to determine what trigger to execute in the in the animation. So now that we have that ready, we're gonna have to we're gonna need a couple more network variables. So the first one is going to be our health. So I'm gonna do the network variable. This one is going to be a float. And then it's gonna say we can say network network player health, just to keep the you know everything else consistent with the naming by prefixing network. And then I'm gonna set this to a large number. We can just do something like a thousand. And then I'm also going to be doing another variable. And this one is so that we can change the, the blend shape, the, the blend tree value. That way when we're basically doing a punch, it doesn't look always the same way. And we also synchronize it to, to other clients. So to do that, I'm also going to be doing a float and this is gonna be network player punch blend. And then I'll just set that to, basically to an empty. We don't need to do anything in there. There's gonna be other things that we need to also take into consideration because we're gonna be doing a raycast from our actual hands. So I'm just gonna do a game object here. This one is going to be my left hand. And then I'll do the same thing with the, we need to basically reassociate these in the prefab. So I'm just gonna do right hand. And then we're also going to need a minimum value to determine you know, at what point we're going to be detecting the, the ray cast. So I'm gonna say this is gonna be float minimum punch distance. And then we can set this to something like 1.0 for now. And then as we tweak it, we can make changes to that. So now that we have those, we could go in and reassociate everything. We'll do that in just a few minutes. Now we need to implement the check punch. So that one I'm going to do, we can just do it right here. And this is gonna be a void. I'm just gonna go call it check punch. You can say check punch stay. I mean, however you wanna call it, I think it's fine. And it's gonna be taking a transform. This is gonna be, you know, which hand we're going to be punching with. And I'm also going to be taking a vector. And this vector, the reason why I'm doing this is because we're going to be punching and then I need to determine, you know, am I going to be, and am I going to be doing a raycast you know, from going going forward, going up, going down. So we need to determine where we're gonna be going from from the origin of the ray cast and where in basically where are gonna be our destination. So this one is going to be the aim direction. 
Hopefully that makes sense. It'll make sense more when, when we start doing the ray cast. And then what I'll do here, I'll just do a ray cast hit. It's gonna be basically storing the hit of the ray cast. And I also need to do a layer mask. So we'll just do layer, layer mask. And then we'll just say layer mask, get mask. And this is gonna say, okay, what, you know, what is going to be the mass of what we're going to be doing a ray cast again. So I'm gonna be punching players. So we're gonna be basically just get the player. And before I forget, let's go ahead and go into the player itself and let's change and add a new layer so that we have that already set up. And we can go here and reassociate the other game objects, the one for the left hand and also for the right hand. So in the layer, I'm gonna create a new layer and this one is going to be just player and we can go back here. And now that we have that set, we also need to go into our skeleton here and basically get the hand. So that's going to be in, let's go ahead and, so here's the hips. And let me go, let me go down. I'm gonna collapse everything so that it makes more sense. I'm gonna go into the spine. This is going to be the, okay, here we go. I think everything is collapsed, so it makes it really hard to see. We don't need the neck. We don't need everything inside the right hand. So these are gonna be the two that, are, that we're going to be doing a ray cast from. Let me make this a little bit smaller so that we can see more of the player. So basically what's gonna happen is I'm gonna have a ray cast going that way, if you can see my mouse. And I'm gonna have another ray cast going that way. That way we can, you know, we can do a punch. So if we go back into here, we can say, okay, which one is gonna be your left hand? That's going to be your left hand. This one is going to be my right hand. And then the minimum punch distance, I think that's what I set it on my demo. Actually, it was a lot lower than that. So I'll do 0.25, I think that's the value that I that I used before. I think rotation speed and everything else, it's okay. I think rotation speed, I set it to something like, like a three. And then everything else in here should be, should be good. Okay, so we have everything that we need to that we need to associate. So let's go back into Visual Studio. So now that we have our ray cast, now we can do basically the actual the actual ray cast. So to do that, we're gonna be using physics, the ray cast. I'll just do physics and then we'll just do that. And then you can do a ray cast from a specific transform. Remember, in this case, I need to use the the actual hand transform that we're going to where we're gonna be doing the ray cast from. So I'm just gonna do, this is gonna be my hand. That's gonna be where we're going to be starting. I'm gonna get the position. And then I need to get basically the, the same. If we go hand and then transform, and then I need to do the transform direction. So it's gonna tell me where we're going to be, you know, which direction we're gonna be going to. So we're gonna do aim direction. I also gonna need to get the hit, so I'm gonna get that out into that variable. And then we're gonna do comma, and then when we do the comma, we need to also specify the minimum, minimum punch distance. And that's gonna be the variable we set up on the, on the very top. And then I also need to set up my layer mask, right? Like, what are we gonna be colliding with when we do, when we do this ray cast? And if we're not currently colliding, we can just also show the ray. I think that's gonna be helpful for debugging purposes. So for debugging purposes, I'm also going to be doing debug and then we can draw the, the ray. And then I'm gonna say the same thing that I did above it. We'll just do, I'm just actually gonna just copy these values right here. I'll just paste that. I'm also going to be multiplying this by the minimum punch, punch distance so that we can see how far that goes. And we can do something like color. Let me do that again. It's gonna be color. And then the color of the ray, we can just say, that that's going to be yellow. And then if we're not doing currently, a, if we're not hitting anything, we can just maybe make it red so that it's obvious that we're currently not hitting anything when we're punching. Okay, so now that we have that, we need to actually get the component that we are currently hitting. So to do that, I'm gonna say, this is gonna be my network object. Oh, can just do var. This is gonna be the, the player that we're hitting. So player uh, hit. And then in this case, I'm going to be getting the hit transform, and then I'm going to get the component. And that component is going to be of type network object, because if we're hitting another player, more likely that player is going to have a network object, because right now we don't we don't add on other different types. So for now, that's going to be always true. And we can also do a little checking here, just to make sure that that is true. 
And if it's not null, what we're gonna do here, once we implement the update health server RPC, is we're gonna be calling update health server RPC. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna be decrementing the health. I'm just gonna do everything we hit the player. We're gonna be decrementing the health by one. So I'll just have a positive number there. And then I'm also going to say player hit. And then basically we're gonna get the owner client ID. We're gonna be implementing that, you know, later once we get once we get this working. So the other thing that I also need to do, so we have the update here, but since we're dealing with physics, I'm going to be doing the fix update. Let me do that again. Fix update, just hit enter. And the way that it's gonna work is we're gonna be, you know, we're gonna be checking for the punch. So for now, and we're not gonna do this on every single frame, but for now, I'm just going to execute it on every single frame so that you guys can see how it works. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that this is going to be the client that owns this and also the, the owner. So we basically wanna make sure that, you know, if we're punching somebody, we're gonna be checking the punch state if I own the, if I am the owner of the player. And then what I'll do here, I'll just say I need one for the, for the left hand and the direction in this one, it's going to be the up direction. So I'll just do vector three and then up. And then remember, this takes a transform, so I need to do transform. And then for the other one, I'll just do down direction. And then this one, it's going to be the, my right hand. Okay, so before I continue, I want, to, I want to show you how this basically looks like if we go back into Unity. So we're gonna be you know, testing things as we go so that we know that everything is working. And we'll wait for Unity to, okay, to start. And then I'm gonna start the multiplayer game. We're gonna start the host and ho ho hopefully everything is going, to, is going to show the race. You guys can see now that I have, it's, it looks like I have, I am Wolverine, right? I have to race. They're really hard to, they're really tiny, but there's a red ray there. There's also another one here. And then, you know, if I were to punch, well, we haven't actually implemented the action to punch, but once we do, you're gonna be able to see the happening. Okay, so we know that that code is working because we can see the ray actually getting executed. So if we go down here, I I had a basically a, an action to, when we're running, we're, we're, we're holding the left shift and also the right shift. I'm gonna be doing one more that is going to allow us to determine if we're punching somebody. So I'm just gonna say static, and then this one is going to be also bull. And then we can say active punch. We can say punching action key. Oh, you can call it punch action key, however you wanna call it. We can just say, I think that makes more sense. And then what I'll do here, we're gonna be using the space, the space key to do that. So I'm gonna say get key, and then this one is gonna be a space and there we go so now that we have that we should be able to basically make another check in here so if i go back up to our our client there's going to be a couple of things in here that i want to check for the first one is going to be network player state well i want to make sure that i am currently punching so let's get the value and then we're going to be doing punch so if i'm currently doing a punch then I know that I'm gonna be checking for those. That way we don't do that on every single frame. Otherwise it's going to be, it's going to be expensive. And then I'm also going to be making sure that we are currently punching. Okay, so that looks good. So, and then everything in here looks fine. So now we need to go into the client input and we need to also detect when we're going to be punching. So for that I'm going to, so this one I'm gonna do for a change motion states. So anything with motion, it's going to be basically the script right here. And then this one is going to be change, uh, I don't know, fighting, fighting states. And then anything with fighting, we're just gonna be putting in here. So I'm just gonna say, if action punch key, it's currently, so if I'm holding basically the space key, and currently the forward input is equal to zero. So I'm only gonna allow these just to keep it simple when we're not running, when we're not gonna be jumping. We haven't had a jump, but if we were, basically when there's no motion, we're gonna allow the punch to happen. And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna also be updating the state. So I'm just gonna need to do update the player state. But in this case, it's gonna be a new state, which we haven't done. Yeah, and it's gonna be punch, right? One caveat to this though is, yeah, this is gonna change the animation. Things are gonna work fine. 
But if you remember at the beginning of looking at this script, we also have a network player punch and the reason why I added this is so we can have more dynamic animations. So if we look at the update player state server RPC, right now it just change, it just takes the state and that's it. So what I'm gonna do here as well, I'm gonna say, okay, if the state is currently punch, then I'm gonna be updating the, the network. So I'm gonna do the network punch blend. I'm gonna get the value and then I'm gonna randomize this. And this one I'm just gonna do range and I'm gonna get a value I think I did from zero to one. That way we can do the blend tree is gonna do either animation where we do, you know, uh, a left punch or you do the right punch or anything in between because we're blending those two. And then I'll do something like this. And these are inclusive. So that means that it's going to take e either, it's gonna generate a number from zero to one. And if you hover over these, you're gonna see that that's what's going to happen. So this is cool because now we can make animations that are a little more dynamic. So if I were to go back now to the actual visualization, we're gonna be able to make something that it's going to be a little bit different. So if we go into client visuals, right now this is gonna change the trigger to basically to, to punch and we're gonna be punching, right? But it's always gonna be the same. So if we wanted to change that, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say, well, if the network, if the network play stay, that value, we're gonna be doing the same thing that we did below. It's currently set to punch. Then I know that I'm gonna be changing the, the value of the blend. So I'm gonna say set flow because that value is going to be a flow. And then what I'll do here is I'm gonna be basically copying this value here. Or we can get, we can basically get this one. Either one is going to work. But the variable that we're gonna be that we're gonna be naming is gonna be blend. That way it's going to be applying that to that property. And then what I'll do is I'll just get the network player state, not the player state, the actual blend value. That way we can we can animate that with basically with a different visual. So if we go back to Unity, if you look at this variable right here, it's called punch blend. So that's basically what's gonna happen here. It's gonna be punch, and this is gonna be appending the word blend. So it's gonna know which variable to update. Okay, so now that we have that completed, we need to focus on a couple of RPCs that we're going to be implementing for this video. So the first one is going to allow us to update the health of the player. So I'm just gonna do server RPC, and then I'm gonna do be doing a public void update server. We can actually say update health server RPC. And then the way this is gonna work, if you remember above, we're taking a health, right? So this is gonna be the new health value or I can I can just say take away, a, I don't know, point. And then comma, you can go, we're gonna be getting the client that we're actually hitting. So this is really important because yeah, we're going to be updating the, the value of the, the health of a player, but we need to make sure we don't update ourselves. We wanna update another client because we're basically hitting another client. So this is gonna be the client ID. So this is something that I, I learned that I thought it was interesting. We're not gonna be updating our health, which is which will be run. We need to get the actual client that we're hitting. So for the for that, we're gonna say player damage or player with damage. And then I'm gonna be getting the network manager and it's gonna be getting a singleton. And I'm gonna be able to get, because this is executing on the server, we're gonna know, we're gonna know all the different clients that are getting, that are currently connected, right? So we can get the client ID there. We can also get the player object and I can also do get component. And then this is gonna allow us to, well, actually get the player with Raycast control, which is the one that is going to be hosting the, the health of the player. So once we have that, one thing that I would recommend that you do, just in case somebody disconnects, is I'm gonna make sure that this is not null, right? Otherwise we're going to be incrementing the health on somebody that disconnects. And with that, and that might throw, that might throw an error. So once we do that, I also want to make sure that the the health value is greater than the value that I'm trying to decrement. So I'm gonna say, you know what? I need to get the health. So let me try this one more time. Client with damage, it has a network. There we go. Player health, and I'm gonna do value. Make sure that that value is greater than zero. Otherwise, it's going to decrement uh, beyond zero, and we don't want that to happen. And then once we have that, we can basically just do the decrementing in here, which is going to be basically taking as, as many 
as many points as we want in here. In this case, we're passing a one, but if you wanted to change that, you can you can also change that. Okay, so that's cool and all, and, and the player is gonna say, yep, yeah, my health changed, but the clan is gonna say that, right? But we need to also execute a method on the clan, and that's where the new one is going to, so we're gonna say something like execute method on the client getting punch, right? So this is what we need to do now. And we'll go back to the other method. So I'm gonna say a client RPC. And this one is only going to be executing on the client that is getting hit, which is something new that I haven't covered in the, in, in the video. So I'm just gonna say notify. And this one is gonna say health change client RPC. And, and you can name that however you think it's appropriate. And then I'm gonna say take away point. That way we can print it in the log. And I'm also gonna be taking a couple of parameters in here. It's gonna be a couple of parameters. I'm gonna set it to the default value. And, and this is the trick, right? This is going to be, you know, taking in parameters and this is gonna allow us to designate, okay, which client is the one that we need to notify. So that's what's gonna allow us to do. I don't wanna notify myself, so I'm gonna say is owner. If it is the owner, then I'm gonna be returning. But in this case, I don't believe this is going to be a problem. But if, just in case, just make sure that if for whatever reason <laughs> might get notified as well, we wanna make sure that we return because I wanna notify other players. And then in here, I'll just do, we can, we can make it more complicated if I wanted to do an animation, me getting hit, like the, the other player getting hit, you can do that. For now, I'll just do log info. And then, because there's just so much time that I, that I want to go over this video. And then I can say something like client, it, client got hit or got punch. And then we can also specify, you know, how much, how many points, which in our case is gonna be, it's gonna be the one, right? And then I can say, yeah, I think, that, I think that's okay. Another thing that we can also do if we wanted to, is we can also get the, you know, how many points that, that client currently has. I'm gonna show you that in the inspector, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that right now, but you can, you know, add an overlay and increment the, the health and then show that as you're hitting the player. Okay, so, so that's cool and all, but we need to call this guy. And, and to call that guy, I need to specify which, which client is going to be executed. So what I'll do here is I'm gonna say, okay, you know what, I want to call from the server side, I want to call that, but I, was, I also want to take, you know, these are gonna be the points that we're gonna be taking down, but I also need to determine who it's going to be getting this message. I'm gonna say new. This is gonna be the same parameters. And then this is going to be taking a target client ID and then it's going to be an array. Okay, there we go. So we have a client params and you can go into the implementation and look at, it takes a client RPC param and also the, the RPC receive params if you wanted to receive a message. And then in this case, we're gonna be notifying, if you wanted to notify multiple clients, you can. In this case, we're punching one client, so we wanna notify that client that you know, that client got punched. So that's what it's going to, that's how this is going to work. And I believe I got everything that we need in here. Just going to double check. Okay, so one thing that we haven't done yet is once we're, we're, once we're basically hitting the client, we need to basically call the RPC. And if I say, if I say basically again, remember what you're gonna do, you're gonna tell me in the comments, but, but uh, I was about to say it again. But what's gonna happen is we're, you know, we're doing a rate cast. We know we put which player is getting hit, which is gonna be another client. And then we're gonna be calling the update health server RPC. We're gonna be decrementing, you know, their health. And we're gonna be passing in the owner, the basically the player owner client ID. That's gonna be calling into the server. The server is gonna say, okay, I wanna know who, which client that is that is getting hit. And then I'm gonna decrement their health and I'm gonna execute a method on the client side to tell that client, yeah, you're getting hit. So that's how that it's going to be. So let's go ahead and go back. And I did talk a lot, so hopefully everything that I just show you, it's going to work. And let's see. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that our animations are currently working. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit play. And then we'll do a build right after that to, to double check it. Okay, so we can run Let's see if we can punch. And we can punch. It's a little bit slow, but I think it, we can, if you wanted to change it, if you wanted to change the speed of the animation, you can do that. I can also select my player in here. You can see how that it's currently working. 
I can, you know, I can do all of those. So let's get close in here because I want to show you. And, and I'm going to be focused on this area, right? So I'm just going to focus on the, I want you to look at the hands, right? As we're heating, there are two, two lines that are displaying on the, on the character face. And that way we can determine, okay, are we hitting somebody else or are we not hitting somebody else? So that's how that it's going to work. So now that we know that that's working, I can do file, build settings. This is going to be the, the, the scene that we're going to be building, which is the demo server RPC and client RPC. And I'm going to go ahead and do a build, select folder and build it there. All right, guys, so I have four different sessions currently open. Let's go ahead and do the host to be this one right here. And then I'm going to do a client here. We'll do another client here and I'll just move it, move it around so that they are, you know, in different locations and I'll do another client, client right here. So let's try from the server side, right? So the server side or the host is going to be this guy right here. So if I try to punch that person, I'm currently not getting anything. And I think because the Raycast might not be, you know, it, it might not go far enough. Let's try that again. So we're trying to punch, trying to punch, and we don't see, we currently don't see the, the punch. Okay, that's fine. We'll just troubleshoot it together. I know you guys told me that you wanted to see when I'm having issues. Well, this is how we're going to troubleshoot it. I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And I'm going to be running another session somewhere in here in my computer. And I'll just do, this one is going to be the host. And then this one right here is going to be the client. So, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and focus on this. And I'm going to look at the local player, which is going to be the one that I'm currently looking at here. And I'm just going to put it, maybe we can just maybe make this a little bit bigger so we can see what's happening. And right now, nothing, I mean, it's not, I don't think it's executing because we don't see it. Let's try, let's see, let's get closer in here. And we don't see anybody currently getting, getting punched. Okay, so one thing that I can do here now that we have this, I can change the punch distance so we can try something big, maybe like 0.6 and we can see if that it's going to fix it. And currently that it's not, for some reason it's not getting, it's, it's actually not doing the right cast. Let's try that again. So I am punching the player. I have my, oh, okay, I see what's, what's happening. If you notice, I, for some reason the, the player layer is not set. So let's try, let's fix that. I'm going to close out of this and I'm going to go into the, I thought I, I thought I set it, but that wasn't set. So I'll just go ahead and set it. And no, nope, I'm going to just set it to that object only. We'll go back here and then let me try and do a new build. All right. So I got two different sessions in here. Let's go ahead and try the host here and then the client here. And I'm just going to go ahead and try to hit the player. And you can see that this one is not getting logged, but this one it's getting a log, right? And that one is getting punched because this is the one that it's getting notified. So what if I, what if I wanted to do, do the other way, right? I want to, so I am playing in this session, but this is the one that needs to get notified. So we can go ahead and, and you can see that, that it's currently working. So let's go ahead and try this one more time, but let's change the camera view. And this one I'm going to add, let's go ahead and add a, a cinema machine brain. And then I'm also going to be adding a virtual camera. All right, guys. So in this build, I have four different sessions. So let's go ahead and start the host. Let's go ahead and start a client, another client and another client. So we should have player three, basically player zero through, through three. And then I'll just move this one around. So let's go ahead and start with the server. Let's see if we can hit player one and, and remember like which ones are which. So if I hit that, you're going to see player one is getting punched. The other one are not getting notified. In fact, you can see player one is here. And then this is the one that is getting punched. What if player one, what if we wanted to do basically the other way? So I'm going to go ahead and punch player zero and this one should get notified. And you can see, let's see, let's get closer. And you can see that player, you know, zero, it's currently getting punched on the face. And then in this case, let's say player zero, oh, let me go back here to the group. And this will look cooler if I had animations, but unfortunately right now. So this one, I'm, I'm basically hitting two players and you can see one is hitting the player one there and then the other one is hitting player zero. Let me go ahead and hit player two. So this one should be notified. And you can see that that one is notified. 
So that's everything that I wanted to show you guys today. If you guys have any questions about this, please let me know in the comments. Thank you.